It's time to cut the cord. We're going to show you how to wirelessly network your home for cheap in this hour of Call for Help. I hope these people can help me with my computer. Oh. <gasps> no! A technician will be with you in four hours. Four hours! You can upgrade for just $5,000. What? The universal serial config board should be set to ID6. I need that in plain English. Help! Leo LaPointe, to call for help. May I help you? Hey, boo boo. Hey, hey, it's time for Call for Help. Hello, how are you? I'm Leo Laporte. Welcome to the show. This is it, ladies and gentlemen, the place to go when you want to know how to use your personal confuser in a more effective manner. And not just PCs. We talk about all kinds of technology here. This is kind of a the technology proving ground, the place I hope you will come when you want to know how to use this stuff better. Today, a great show for you. Something, something I'm a big believer in. Wi-Fi. You've heard of Hi-Fi? Hi-Fi, of course, your high-fidelity stereo. Wi-Fi, your wireless networking. Every home's got to have one. And you might have said in the past, well, geez, I'm not going to spend $300 for a Wi-Fi router than a $100 machine. No, no, my friends, the prices have tumbled. It, it costs practically nothing. And it's, it's, it's easily the easiest way to get your house online. So we're going to show you how to do it. Hardware, software, setup, security, everything you need to know. Wi-Fi, wire-free networking in no time coming up on the show. Plus, as usual, it's our Wednesday must be Photoshop day. Yes, indeed, DV Garage's Alex Lindsay is here, our Photoshop guru. He's going to do some Photoshop magic. We're going to talk about layers. So one of the most important tools and, and a particular part of layers called layer blends. Now, Kat is still out, I'm sorry to say. She's got a little family emergency, uh, but, and we wish her well. But Sarah is back filling in. We're so happy to have Sarah. So happy to be here. A little, I love the a show. little Laura Ashley kind of thing today. Yeah. It's very pretty. You know, that's exactly very what I thought. Very pretty. I know, yeah. It's, yeah. you know. Do they still It's just, not always diamonds. Is Laura and Ashley dead? Me, Leo. Or is it, it was, is that, was that the 90s and like it's gone? Is, do people still do that? Kind of. Kind of. Yeah, Laura Ashley was really big. Lily's back, though. You don't remember Lily. From Lily's from my era. It yeah, was I don't very, know Lily. It was the hip flo floral prints from the 60s and 70s. You know, who doesn't like flowers, really? Floral I mean, are flowers prints? ever out of style? Always I don't think so. This be. is cute. Well, I it's don't... good that you could be here. We thank you for being here. <laughs> very happy to be here, Leo. Is there any way, any way at all, that somebody could actually interact with this show? Ooh, yes. Mm. In fact, you're in luck. Because if you have a question, you can give us a call. The number, of course, you know what it is. It's 888-989-7879. You can also email us. We check in our email all day long. Call for help at techtv.com. And if you have a netcam, please get in the game, or at least the netcam cineplex chat room at techtv.com slash call for help. And if all else fails, yes. you can always post something on our message boards. Good, bad, ugly. Believe us, we read it all. We, we've seen all three, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of them. <laughs> it's very fun. I spend a lot of time in those Do you read those boards. message boards? I do. Um, for Call for Help and Screensavers, just because it's nice to know what people are thinking. That's you good. know, it's, it's, sometimes it's good feedback, sometimes it's bad. It's very valuable. But you take it all, you know, some of it with a grain of salt and some of it to heart. So. We love to hear from our viewers. Yes, That's it's true. Sure. It's absolutely Let's true. hear from one right now. We have a caller on the line. Our first caller is actually part of the Tech TV Netcam Network. It's Bernard from Scaniatalus, New York. I said it right. Is that how you say it? Scaniatalus. Scaniatalus? I don't know. Am I right? Hey, Bernard. Scaniatalus. All right. I never heard of Scaniatalus. Where is that? Uh, it's about uh, 15 miles from Syracuse. All right. So you, you're, uh, is, that, is that upstate? Would you call it upstate? Central New York. Central New York. It's not quite upstate yet. Look at this now. I'm just looking at your home. It looks like a beautiful home. You don't look like a geek. You've got, you've got decor. Obviously, you're posing as a geek on television, Bernard. Is that right? No, I'm not posing. I, I love to, technology. I've got uh, three computers here in the house, a laptop, anything tech. I love it. I'm impressed. Well, what can I do for you today? Look, uh, I'm looking to put the Penguin on my system, and yes. um, that'd be Linux. Uh, I downloaded the ISO files, and I'm wondering if you can suggest to me how to turn those into usable <laughs> CDs. Yeah, what do I do now? That's a very common uh, question. Uh, in fact, if we go to uh, linuxiso.org, which is a place we often recommend for people to download, if you want to get into Linux, to download Linux. If you go to any of these places, what you're going to get is a .iso file. ISO stands for the International Organization for Standards. 
I know they it's it should be iOS, shouldn't it? But they re but they reorganized it uh, to to kind of go with the Greek word for equal. And the ISO sets standards for all kinds of things. They set standards uh, for uh, even like how safe chairs are, things like that. But one of the ISO standards is 9660. It's the standard for a CD-ROM. And so just kind of colloquially, uh, image files of CD-ROMs have been called ISOs or .ISO files. And they very, very often do have, in fact, that .ISO extension. We've got one right here that we downloaded that has a .ISO extension. What is that? asks Bernard. What the heck is this thing I downloaded? Well, think of it as kind of uh, dehydrated camp food. You ever go camping? Oh, yes. Yeah, you get a whole steak and potatoes meal, and it's dehydrated in, in a little pouch. And, and you add water, and boom, it's steak and potatoes right there on your... Usually not that good, but it's there. Well, this is kind of like that. What they did is they took the CD, and they took all the all the extra out of it. They, they actually made a bit copy of that CD and so, stored it as a file. Very often these files are as big as a CD. Sometimes because of compression they're a little smaller. This one's 488 megabytes. But it will turn into a 650 megabyte CD. What we need is burning software. Now you can use, uh, you know, we recommend and, and often uh, use Nero because it's a shareware, $49 shareware. <laughs> it says this may be a pirated version of Nero, Roger. This may be a pirated version of Nero. Okay. Pirates are cool. <laughs> we better we better get a real serial number on this. And I can go to the. F <laughs> I bought Nero. I just want everybody to know I paid for Nero. It's worth the forty nine bucks. They wanted to get rid of it, and they got rid of it. Yeah, yeah, you got rid of it, all right, Roger. <laughs> now we go to the file menu and select Burn Image, and that's what you want to do. You're going to make an. You're going to make a CD from an image. And it can actually see a variety of image files, .nrg, .iso, .q, and it's going to see that. And we'll just select that, and then actually we'll reconstitute it. It will add the water to the dinty, more dehydrated stew and create a CD. I'm going to show you another thing, though, that I really like. This is really cool. This comes from a, a guy named Alex Feynman. It's his ISO recorder power tour. Do you use XP, uh, Bernard, for your other operating system? Yes, I do. XP has uh, CD-ROM burning capability. It doesn't have ISO burning capability. It doesn't have CD-ROM burning capability. You add this little power toy. It's free. It's just, you know, a few bytes. You download it and uh, install it. And I've done that. And I'll look what I'm going to do here. Watch this. I'm going to close this, and I'm going to right-click on the ISO that I downloaded. And it adds to the context menu, copy image to CD. It actually gives that capability to Windows XP's built-in CD burning. So this is an even easier way. If you if we work with ISOs a lot, most people don't. Most people are going to install Linux, they download it once, they install it. Uh, but but ISOs turn out to be a great way to make backup copies of your CDs as well. So if you do that a lot, this is a really handy program uh, from AlexFeynman.com. So Bernard, more information than you ever wanted to know, probably. Works great. Sounds, sounds <laughs> which, wonderful. Which what, now have you ever used Linux before? No, not at all. And and what prompts you to try this? Uh, be interested in this? Uh, well, uh, 20 years ago, I did some batch files with DOS, and I just thought I'd like to uh, get into programming again. You're you're a command line kind of guy. Yeah. Well, I think you're going to love it. And I'll tell you the truth: Linux, because it's Unix basically, uh, and Unix is the operating system of the internet of most universities. It really is kind of the cornerstone of computing, mm -hmm. of hardcore computing. Uh, is a great thing for anybody to learn. So I always recommend people at least try it. And you can download it for free. So good luck. Enjoy. Okay. Thanks, Leo. Thanks, Bernard. Big fan. Take care. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Well, you know, I, I didn't ask him what version he's going to uh, use, but I do recommend you go to linuxiso.org and take a look. There's a variety of choices. Nopix is a good one for people who don't want to install it. They just want to try it from the CD. Hey, coming up next, learning how to blend layers effectively.